I've been using Office for 30 plus years and today I'm going to show you 10 features which I love and use regularly. Let's start with Word. So one of the features I used almost every day is how to convert text to table. I have a long list of topics I'm going to cover for the customer but when I send it it's in Word or email when I'm presenting it it's in PowerPoint so I need to convert it to a table and in a specific way that's what I'll show you. I have this list and I want to convert it to a table. That's easy. You can just say insert table. It will do it. But no, I want to convert text to table because I want to have control over how many columns it creates. Right now it created one column. Now if I go to convert text to table, it's still going to create one column. So what's the difference? I want more than one column and I want this list to be split into columns. So same thing, insert table, convert text to table. So I'm going to say I want five columns and then it recalculates the number of rows. And important thing to understand is the separator. Right now, paragraph means column. If there was a comma delimited kind of thing, you could have chosen separators or delimiters as well. For now, I just specify the columns. I get this and then I can use it somewhere else. This is just one feature in Word table. We actually have another video which covers 13 common problems with Word table. Have a look. Here is a feature of OneNote which I absolutely love. I am attending a meeting, attending a training, workshop. I do the recording, but while I am recording, I also am taking notes. And later on, I want to link what I have written versus what is recorded. And that is possible in OneNote. I have 19 minutes of recording because the meeting went on for that long. I have taken few notes and everything is okay. Now after six months, what happens? There is some dispute. I have written 5% discount and the person is saying, no, 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 it was only 4%. Otherwise, I would not have any evidence, but right now I have the recording. But the problem now is it's a long recording, in this case 20 minutes. Where exactly did I say or that person said or discussed about discount? It's somewhere in this duration. Exactly where? That I don't know. This play button is going to play from beginning to end. Not very useful for us right now. What I would ideally love to have is where I've written 5% discount, I should be able to play from there from that point of time and surprisingly miraculously you have those buttons you hover there click on this button and now it jumps to exactly what that spot is and start speaking from there recently i published a video on one note best practices i am sure you will like it check it out i have a common need I go to different customers every day. Now each customer, I have to show some demo and I need data which they can relate to. Now they are not going to give me data on day one. So I need to generate random data which looks realistic. And one function in Excel helps me do that for so many years. It's called rand between. So three types of data I need. Some numbers, some dates and some text. So let's start with numbers. Suppose I want this much of random numbers between 100 and 1000. I use rand between, not rand, rand will just create a decimal, 100 and 1000 and press control enter. Now of course this is a volatile function every time I press F9 or something changes, it's going to change. So immediately copy paste special values. Now if I want the same thing to happen for dates, so I want let's say last two years of dates, again randomly generated. It's just a simple tweak of the rand between. So I want to dates from last three years. Based on what? Today's date. Today's date minus three years, whatever that is. So I again have rand between zero, that includes today's date, and then 365 multiplied by three. And that control enter will give me dates across last three years. Now suppose the same thing I want, but based on text, what do I do? There is no rand between text, no problem. But generally when it is text, it's not just a number or it's not just a date. Specific items, names of products, names of categories, names of group companies, something like that. So the text is fixed. And then I want random occurrences of the text. That can be done quite easily. Let's say there are five categories. First of all, I just do rand between one to five. And of course, I copy paste as values. But then I want this to be converted. So I'm sure you got the idea already. So I just create a lookup table here, create a table out of it. What is the name of this table? Table nine doesn't matter. And here I also make a table. And I just do a VLOOKUP. I want to pick up this value. I want to pick up from table nine and I want the second column. 
and I get this, then we can copy paste specialized value. Now this may sound like too much of an effort, but remember when I'm showing demos to customers, if the data looks realistic, it's very, very impactful. And right now I just created 11 rows. In real life, I will create much larger data. We all use PowerPoint, yes. Do we have templates? Yes. I also have lots of templates. Sometimes I need information from someone else. So I send the template to someone, ask them to give me slides. Now most people do that, but sometimes they change the way, the look and feel of the template is. They may change font, color, alignment, and then repairing it becomes a painful exercise. Actually not, it's just one click, and that's what I'll show you. You click on the slide, go to the home tab. This is where new slide you choose the layout. We don't want to do that. The layout is already there. It's spoiled. There is a powerful button called reset. Just one click and all the junk which was done on top of the base layout is completely nullified and you get back exactly what you wanted. Of course, there is a caveat. If people have added more objects which were not a part of the layout, PowerPoint doesn't know what to do with those. So they will still hang around. To give you an example, apart from adding all kinds of unnecessary stuff to this slide, the other person had added some completely unrelated thing there. And now I click on the reset button. What is going to happen? PowerPoint doesn't know what to do with this. So this you'll have to manage manually. When you are presenting, one thing is about how to create the content and another is about how to deliver it. I have a nice video about how to present more effectively. Do check it out. For 30 years, we have been using email and every now and then some software comes and says, okay, we are going to eliminate email. It's a joke almost like saying paperless office. Never mind. When you send an email, generally we are worried about what I want to communicate. We are not worried about the impact on the other party. And the Outlook delay delivery option is a brilliant way of getting rid of your thoughts without disturbing the other party and improving work-life balance. So I'm the boss. It's Sunday afternoon. I got some idea and I'm sending a mail to my assistant. So very common thing. But then the assistant is going to look at it, maybe act on it on a Sunday. I don't want that as well. And that's where this schedule send comes into picture. You click on it. It says, okay, you send it now. I'm going to deliver it to that person when Monday morning starts. Now, maybe at nine o'clock, there are too many mails pending. You want to delay it to say 10.30, fine, it's up to you. And now you send the mail. Like delay delivery, loop components was another feature which was recently added and it's really powerful. Have a look. Do you know that very complex processes are often driven by checklists? You will see examples of this in aviation, surgical field, and even content creation. I'm going to show you how to use OneNote to manage checklists. So before a session, I have this checklist. So I make the list, press control one. Why? Because control one is to do. And when I'm actually doing it, I mark it as complete. Next day, I want to reset it. Select all, control A, control one again. All of them are ticked. Control one again and control one again. It comes back. Now you want to go one step further. This is a repetitive checklist with different instances. For example, this was a recruitment checklist. And for every person whom I'm recruiting, this checklist instance is different. No problem. Go here, then go to insert page templates, choose page templates area, and now say save this as a template. Now, next time, if I have a recruitment OneNote notebook, I can say for this section, every time I add a new page, this particular template should come up. So if you use it correctly, OneNote checklist is a great feature. I'm sure you'll relate to this one. I get a document from someone, it has all kinds of weird formatting and I can't make head or tail of it. If you want to troubleshoot formatting, this is the feature in Word you absolutely must know. All these paragraphs look similar, but there's something wrong with this paragraph. I can, I'm guessing there is something to do with spacing, but why guess when you can actually find out? So click in the paragraph which has a problem. I want to see the detailed formatting, press Shift F1, which is called Reveal Formatting. Now I want to compare the formatting of this paragraph with this paragraph. But before that, enable this checkbox. That way we know that it's getting something from normal and normal paragraph style as well. And there is some direct manual formatting. This is important to know. Usually you should not do it. Now I want to compare it with another paragraph. So enable this checkbox, click on the other paragraph. Now it will go through hundreds of formatting properties and then only point out the difference. So first click we did here. That's single spacing and this is 1.2 line spacing. That is the difference. An invaluable feature 
for troubleshooting formatting in Word. Now, this is a feature in Excel which even the experts may not be aware of. The reason being that menu is always disabled and there is only one way to enable it. The idea is simple. I create a pivot table report, great. But sometimes I want a custom report. Pivot table doesn't allow me any customization. So this feature called convert to formulas allows you to create a pivot table and then rearrange the cells entirely the way you want. It's a table. The name of the table is transactions. I have already created a pivot table. Everything is okay. But for the final reporting purpose, I want these cells to be arranged entirely in a customized manner. As you know, pivot table is not going to allow me to do that. If I try to drag this cell out, it's not going to work. So if I want complete control over how these cells are arranged, how do you do that? I know where this file is. I know the table name. I close the file. I create a blank new file. And now I'm going to import that file from there. So I guess go to data, get data from file Excel and I'll choose that file. Now after I choose the file, of course, we will get the navigator dialog. Let's assume for the time being that this data is clean. So I'm just going to load the data, but I'm going to choose load two. And this time I'm not going to import the data in Excel table. I'll only create a connection, add this to data model. That's all there is to it. Now let it process, let the query come in. The Excel sheet is empty because it has gone into the data model. If you want to see it, go to Power Pivot, Manage, a separate window will open and yes, the data is there. Now, how do I create a pivot table? I go to Insert Pivot Table from Data Model and I'm going to create exactly the same pivot table as before. So I'm going to put Product ID, Status, Amount. So what is the big deal? We just got the same pivot table. Now to show you the miraculous feature, I'm going to select this pivot table and just copy paste it below to show you the difference. This is a traditional pivot table. It will still not allow me to do any mischief. Now I click in the pivot table, go to analyze button, go to lab tools and probably you have never seen this option being active. Now it is. So just click on this button, convert to formulas and then it does something. It's still showing you the same values, but now it's no longer a pivot table and look at this. Wherever there is data area, you'll see cube value and row and column area, it'll say cube member. Now the best part is you can just drag and drop it anywhere you want and create a custom report. And the best part is now I've opened the original file and one of the products I'm going to increase by a significant margin. So whatever this number is, I'm going to add five zeros to it. Remember the product ID is W439. One, two, three, four. Now let's save this file, close the file, come back to our output report, and then we will have to refresh this, isn't it? So you go to data and say refresh all, and let's see what happens. All this, including this one, changed automatically. So it is still maintaining its connection with the underlying data, and you have the flexibility of taking any value anywhere and create a custom report. I think that's an outstanding feature which everyone should know about. Now Excel convert to formulas requires data model. I just created a video on how to use data model. You must check it out. All right, now whether it is COVID, post COVID hybrid, online presentations are here to stay. All the time we are presenting. Now assuming you are presenting in PowerPoint, whether it is Zoom or Teams or XYZ, there is a PPT and your photo is somewhere else. Wouldn't you want to do it like streaming where there is a screen where you are showing your PPT and your talking head as we call it or your face is embedded in it. So people don't have to look somewhere else. It is more natural. It is more professional. That feature in PowerPoint is called Cameo. So I go to insert Cameo and then it will add the camera. Now once I click on the camera object, I get a camera format option. If I have multiple cameras, I can choose from here, but that's not all. For all practical purposes, you can treat this object as though it was a shape in PowerPoint. So I can resize it. I can have different shapes around it. I can have various types of special effects on top of it and so on. Now what is going to happen when I run the presentation is going to display itself like this. What else does it give? So we get picture corrections, picture color, cropping. For example, if I want to show something like a sepia tone, I can do that. This is happening live. It also allows you to do brightness, contrast, cropping and stuff like that. All the standard things you would expect in a shape 
in PowerPoint. By the way, I want Cameo here. I don't want Cameo on the next slide. What happens? So I'm running this now. This is the first slide. Now when I go to the second slide, what happens to the Cameo? It's gone. So I can decide on which slide I want the Cameo because some places I want to explain something. I don't want that to be interfered with by talking head. So completely under control, PowerPoint Cameo. Now this is a really new feature in Excel. Ability to put images in Excel. I will say what is new? We have been able to do that. No, we are not talking about images as a separate layer. Images inside the cell. It's released very recently, probably even now it is in beta, but it's coming. Of course, I could drag drop an image into Excel, but that is not a part of the cell. It's a separate layer on top of the spreadsheet. Now, look at what happens. I have two columns here which contain links to an image. Both are PNG files. So category image means Office 365 logo and product image in this case means Access logo, Excel logo, like that. Now, how do I ask Excel to render that URL as a picture? So let's put a formula. Let's add a column here first. The function is called image. What is the syntax? Of course, I have to pick up the name of the column. So in this case, I'm going to choose product image and then alt text because people with visual disabilities need to be shown an alternative text. Now in this case, it's a formula. So I'm going to just hard code a generic text. The next one is important. What do you want to do about the image? Because the cell size and the image size may not match. So how do you make them match? So right now I'm just going to say fit cell and then leave it alone. Now, as you can see, it went to all those URLs, found the image, got the image down, downloaded it, and then it is rendered it correctly in the available space. Now, just to show what happens when I decrease or increase the space, let's decrease it first. It has reduced the size. If I increase it, it has increased the size. I increased it only for this cell, remember? Then it increased it. What if I increase the width? Yes, so it's adjusting itself. Now let's understand the parameter. Let's take one cell for simplicity. So what we have just now is fit cell. Okay. Now, if I choose the next one, which is fill cell, and assuming the cell is smaller than the size of the image, notice what happens. Now, obviously it has distorted things, not a good idea. The third option, which I'm talking about is uh, original size. So notice most of these images are much larger than the cell size. So they're just getting cut off. And then the last option is I want to specify the size. Now if you just say three, it is going to give you an error because the moment you say custom, it expects you to say how much, how big is the image, height and width. So for a demo purpose, I'm just going to say 50 height and 50 width. So now that happens to be so small. So this is how you insert images in Excel. Now, could this URL be a local C colon something? Yes, absolutely. If it is an internet URL, you need internet connection because you're not going to cache those images when you type the formula. If it's a local drive URL, maybe it works on your PC, but if you send this file to someone else and that path or that URL is not accessible at that point, the images are not going to render, you will get the value error. I'm getting a lot of feedback nowadays. People are saying, your videos are great, but we want a more detailed, comprehensive course from you. I'm working on that and you'll see an announcement very soon. Why am I doing this? Not for money. 1.5 billion people use Office. I want to improve their lives, their efficiency, so that they can grow faster. So if you liked it, please let me know that you liked it by putting a comment and clicking the like button. YouTube also needs to know you liked it so that more people will benefit from it. And finally, I create content almost every day. So subscribe and click the bell icon. Recently, YouTube has added something called Super Thanks. Have a look at that as well. So till next time, thank you.